What's going on ladies and gents, boys and girls, guardians of all ages, Joker back again once again, and today people, today. So recently I upset the Destiny 2 endgame community with my take on Divinity. Seems like they can read runes, but when it comes to basic comprehension, many, at least the ones that clearly didn't understand what I was talking about, lack basic comprehension, or are just in abject denial of reality. Or more likely, they didn't actually watch the video, they just said, Red Titan Dude Crosses Arms is bad, must hate hate Red Tight. He says things about game that I don't like. He bad. So typical Destiny 2 fanboy nonsense. I'm not apologizing. Now because every video is somebody's first, what exactly is my stance on Divinity and the endgame of Destiny in general? What horrific things did I say to cause fanboys and endgame raiders and speedrunners to all simultaneously cry out in one voice, THE JOKER! Well, basically I said, Destiny 2 is a hyper-casual game. I know, right? How will I ever live with myself? Forgive me, Reddit, for I have sinned. I had the audacity to call Destiny 2 a hyper-casual game. Because, well, it is. Look at how easy virtually everything in the game is. Look at how anything that might have once resembled something that you might consider a skill gap, if you squint your eyes and tilt your head to the left, has been steadily expunged from PvP let alone the game as a whole. Look at how seasons are becoming more and more like episodic mobile phone games, complete with progression lockouts. When was the last time the endgame was actually challenging? And I do mean challenging, not this artificial difficulty bullshit that we see with GM Nightfalls, where Bungie throws on half a dozen debuff modifiers and enemies that can one-shot players, all while limiting the loadouts you can use with special mods and champions. When was the last time we had real hold on, let me think, let me puzzle this out, difficulty? Last wish? Maybe? And that was the Riven fight, a fight the community by and large refuses to learn how to do. And Bungie has never done anything about it. So sure, while there's how Bungie intended the fight to work, people just nuke Riven or wipe. That might be an oversimplification, but you get my point. The Joker! I uh, hear you cry out in your shrill tremulous voice. I've seen your raid report, and you don't have hundreds of clears of each raid. You don't play the end game, so you don't know what you're talking about. You're just bad. Oh, and people say this unironically, as if being in an abusive relationship with a video game is a good thing. This is quite possibly my favorite quip, because it doesn't address any of my actual arguments. Likely because the people making these arguments don't know what my arguments are. See fanboys being fanboys boys from the intro of the video. I'm not apologizing. This gets even dumber once you realize the immutable truth. This is not a flex. I'm a content creator. I have a modest 73,000 plus subscribers. I am more than confident I have people subscribed to me that are amazing raiders who'd be more than happy to help me out. Anytime I wanted it, I have friends who are hardcore raiders, who have the titles, who have hundreds of clears of each raid, people I know IRL, and other content creators I'm lucky to consider my friends. If I saw actual, legitimate value in grinding out the endgame, I would. Simply put, it's not there. I will use Trials of Osiris as an example, but really the same applies to raids and dungeons. This season in Trials of Osiris, there's a rather spicy shotgun. I honestly don't think you're allowed to be a Destiny YouTuber without having an opinion on shotguns, so here's mine. As of late, I've been getting more and more into slug shotguns, because honestly, at this point, pellet shotguns have been hit really, really hard. The best pellet shotgun in the game at time of recording is Time Loss Found Verdict. But who cares? No, really, who cares? The Tom Loss Found Verdict's max OHK range is what, 6 to 7 meters? And you can be about 95% sure that 55% of the time that's going to happen? Maybe? because shotguns are inconsistent. So what exactly is the point of jumping through all the hoops to get time loss found verdict when easier to get and better options exist? Fusion rifles, sidearms, SMGs, or for the sake of our discussion, slug shotguns. I mean, after all, if I'm going to use a shotgun, and most times it's going to be for cleaning up a kill or softening a kill before I shoulder charge into them, I might as well use a shotgun that has the ability to get OHKs at longer distances via headshot, while still doing all the 
body shot damage that normal shotguns do anyways, but at a greater distance. In walks the Trials of Osiris shotgun, the Inquisitor. This thing is a beast. But in order to get one, you have to play Trials of Osiris. So let me ask, what's the most efficient way to farm the Inquisitor? Go to the lighthouse and get put in the flawless pool, or get a loss at the beginning of your card, play to 7 wins, and then with max EXP gains, keep leveling up Saint, and get as many packages as you possibly can. Oh sure, you forgo an Adept one, but an Adept one's RNG. Even if you did get an Adept one, it's probably not going to be a god roll. Do you see the problem here? I'm more incentivized to complete content in the easiest way possible or not. I mean, after all, you still get EXP for losing, so I'm incentivized to play the game in the most efficient way possible. And I know going to the lighthouse will put me in the flawless pool, which is less than ideal. So why would I do it? What is ideal is avoiding hard content like the fucking plague and still profiting because at the end of the day, Destiny is a hyper-casual game. So to get back to the original point of my thoughts on Divinity in the Endgame, in a perfect world, Divinity would be nerfed. Hell, in a perfect world, Divinity wouldn't even exist. In a perfect world, endgame content would be worth playing more than it's required to get exotics. In a perfect world, master raids would be worth doing. In a perfect world, difficult content would reward perseverance and engagement. In a perfect world. We unfortunately do not live in a perfect world. And Bungie, you know, the company that makes the game that we play really, really likes money. Gasp, shock, horror, lightning crackle, lightning crackle, lightning crackle. And you know who gives Bungie the most money? Is it the core 1% of the 1% hardcore raiders? Or is it the tens, hundreds of thousands of casual players? Hmm. Very hard mathematical equation. 1% of 1% or hundreds of thousands of players? Hmm, I, I don't know, man. 1% one per, one percent of 1% or hundreds of thousands. <sighs> hmm, I might have to phone a friend here. This is just such an impossible question to answer. I don't know what I'll do with myself. No, of course. It is the hundreds of thousands of casual players, and if you think otherwise, you're an abject denial of reality. And the problem with casual players is they don't want to get better because they don't have to. We don't live in the fantasy world where divinity doesn't exist and Destiny 2 is a hyper-competitive game. The reality is, as I've said already, Destiny 2 is a hyper-casual game. So casual, in fact, that Bungie has largely boiled down getting some of the best loot in the game to a one-hour-a-week grind. Sure, it may take you five weeks, but that's honestly not not that big of a deal. More so once you consider you used to be able to grind for a god-rolled weapon all day, week, month, and year for a weapon that you would never see. I'm not saying that system is better, but clearly Bungie is overcorrected. Another reality that we have to face is barely any of the player base actually touch raid content. Content in a game where Bungie already has difficulty creating content. Does anybody honestly believe that Bungie spends six months to a year planning out and designing new raids or repurposing old ones and are satisfied with only 15% of the player base or near enough not to matter playing that content? Hell no, and if you do, again, you're an abject denial of reality. And yet, when you point out this reality, the hardcore of the hardcore will lose their shit. Which is funny, because if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you'll know I always advocate in favor of the hardcore, even if it's contrary to my own interest because I know it'll make a better game. You have to have that high-in-the-sky aspirational content. You need rewards like Not Forgotten to drive players into playlists that they usually wouldn't play and take a game serious that they usually wouldn't take serious. I've always advocated for real challenging content and rewards to go along with it. However, just because I advocate for something doesn't mean I'm blind to the reality of what is and why it's that way. There is the reality as we want and the reality as is, and seldom do the two align, at least as long as it's more profitable to cater to the casual community. For example, do you honestly believe that we would have skill-based matchmaking if the hardcore community was outspending the casual community? No, but the hardcore community would rather earn things than spend money on things. 
and so Bungie's going to cater towards the audience that spends the most money. Now, you would think everything I'm saying here would be basic fucking logic. Logic 101 would joker. Corporations follow the money. Surprising, I know. Gasp, shock, horror, lightning crackle, lightning crackle, lightning crackle. But well, fanboys, by the very definition, are illogical. And hardcore fanboys, even more so. They are the 1% of a 1%. However, Destiny is the gift that keeps on giving. I've buried the lead for the better part of 10 minutes, so let's get to the point. As I've said repeatedly, Destiny 2 is a casual game. No one can, in good faith, argue against that. And we found out last week just how truly casual Destiny 2 is. No, it had nothing to do with the weapon crafting system, or skill-based matchmaking, or another nerf to player movement that makes absolutely no sense with skill-based matchmaking. It wasn't even some new or, I guess, old mechanic that allows players to circumvent the endgame and still get rewards. Remember, that was a thing in year one, provided you were part of a clan that had people who raided in it. Surprisingly enough, it was something so much smaller and relatively insignificant in the grand scheme of things, but all the more telling, and serves as the exclamation point to something I've been saying for a long time now. Destiny 2 is junk food. On Tuesday, September 20th, a challenge was presented as part of the MSQ main story questline. A harrowing challenge, if you believe the casual players. A challenge so challenging that Sisyphus himself looked at it and said, Nah, man, I'm, I'm good pushing this boulder uphill for eternity. What was this challenge, you ask? Well, um, kill 50 champions? Actually, it wasn't even that. It was like, kill slightly more than a handful of champions in Master Catch Crash. Kill slightly more more than more than a handful in not Master Catch Crash, and then maybe, just maybe, if you were playing Lost Sectors only, kill 50 enemies. But I've heard reports that it wasn't actually that bad, that it was just poorly explained. Regardless, even if it was 50, that's not that big of a deal. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely positively hate champions. I think I've been pretty clear on that. And I have to wonder how exactly this quest step got all the way into the live game, from conception to publication. Like, who at Bungie sat down and thought to themselves, man, you know, players really dislike champions, so maybe they'll like them more if we make them kill a bunch of them to unlock the story. I literally cannot fathom how this quest step made it into the game as part of the MSQ. Now, if it was a weekly challenge or whatever, no one would do it, and that would be that. But how did it make it into the game as part of the MSQ? Who at Bungie thought that this would be fun? Did they think that this would just be like part of that passive grind that everybody's playing Master Catch Crash because they're not, there's no matchmaking, and the Destiny community really does not like the word acronym LFG. But for Bungie to put the quest out and then immediately cave to players and auto-complete it? That is some next-level casual bullshit. And you know what? That's okay, because that's the type of game Destiny is. But at the same time, if you wanted a way to prove my point, showing that the community is so casual that they could not be bothered to kill a relatively easy-to-kill, fairly common enemy 50 times is just... Chef's kiss when it comes to pointing out the reality of Destiny 2. So when I sit here harping on and on and on about how hardcore players don't get it, it's actually kind of infuriating because they have to be being deliberately obtuse. They know what Destiny is, or they have to, right? It's not some esoteric thing. Destiny 2 is junk food. It's easy mode. It's a casual game. That's fine. Just like it's fine to want to change that, to want more hardcore content, to want more aspirational content, to want rewards and weapons that are worth your time, to get something more meaningful than a what? Glorified nameplate for playing some of the hardest content in the game? But to advocate for this, you have to start from a place of understanding reality. Now, I wish Destiny had harder content. I wish that content was rewarded. I wish we got amazing loot for playing the hardest content in the game. But we lost that when 2200 became too much to ask players to get pinnacle weapons. We lost that when winning seven games to go to the lighthouse was way too much of an ask. So Trials of Osiris was butchered and is now far more rewarding to sit in the playlist and not progress, not try to win the activity. We lost when skill-based matchmaking was introduced, incentivizing players to stagnate, to get worse, because getting better meant a worse matchmaking experience. 
We lost it when raid loot became craftable, when you were guaranteed deep sight weapons, and the end game had an expiration date. We lost it when normal raid loot is better than adept raid loot, because normal raid loot can be crafted. That's when we lost it. That's when we lost the battle for the identity of Destiny as a hardcore game. And now all we get is whatever scraps Bungie is willing to grace us with. But what do I know? I don't have a million and one raid clears. I've only been doing this thing called paying attention to reality. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. And above all else, stay frosty.